My name is Yasmin Malbacus, and currently I'm doing a master's in science in terrorism and political violence studies. I'm from, I'm British born Muslim, but my parents are Pashtun and Guyanese. How did I get to where I am today has been a long struggle in life. I have had a very rocky childhood. From the moment I was born, there were problems between my father and my mother because of cultural clashes, my father being Pashtun, my mother being Guyanese, South American. So there were always domestic issues, which is one of the reasons why I ended up in foster care. At the age of 15, I had enough of my life. You know, obviously being sexually abused by a male relative, you're having to keep that in within yourself. Um, you feel dirty, you feel, you know, ugly. You're constantly told that you're ugly, you're constantly told that you're a failure. At the age of 15, I remember wanting to commit suicide and I did attempt suicide. So at that time at the age of 15, I had the whole world against me. My case was going to court. And eventually the case dropped because they said there was no evidence. So here I was, 15 years, I'm out of there. I'm in foster home again. I'm with a new family, it's a totally different life, but I, everything is shattered for me uh, because I spoke the truth. Eventually then I moved down with my father because the social services worked with us. And it was when my stepmother, who's English by the way, convinced him and she actually believed me. She was the only one who believed me out of the whole family that I was telling the truth. So anyway, coming, uh, from there, I met my husband. Things weren't okay at home again between my dad and my stepmother. And I felt that it was because of my presence and I didn't really fit in. So at that time, my father was looking for someone for me to get married. I got married really young at the age of 16 to my husband, who's from abroad, um, from Mauritius, a very different culture to what I, you know, I imagined. I didn't know about this culture. My schooling was very, very, um, Simple. I mean, to be honest, I, did, I didn't fail, but I got really low grades in my GCSE exams due to the stress of the, of the court case, and that affected my grades. Then I started studying about Islam from very simple books, and one of them was Ma'dudi, Abu Ala Ma'dudi. Eventually, understanding Islam from the, um, the simple side, because I needed something now, because I needed something to cope with. I was having a bit of domestic problem with my husband as well. And I think there was cultural clashes as well. So I became, you know, spiritually um, enriched by reading the Quran and I started praying. There were circles that I was really, really interested in, Islamic circles. They were different because they addressed the social systems. At that time I was having a lot of problems with the in-laws. And what was like music to my ears at that time was that you can't have two queens in a house. So therefore, it empowered me to get my own place. You know, I was myself, and that woman is her own being and her own self in Islam. And these were his Tahrir circles. And what was so new about these circles was that they were discussing about a system, the social system, and then the judicial system. And what was more attracted me to this um, group or their way of thinking was how Suppose in an Islamic state, my perpetrator would be brought to justice by the Khalif, by the Islamic ruler. So that really uh, played a part in my private life, in my past life, because I never found justice. The secular way of life um, had let me down. I wanted to know more, well, what was this about? What was this new golden era? You don't find this in the mosque. You know, I never heard about these uh, talks in the mosque. It was always about spiritual. I wanted something different, of, you know, some kind of activism now. So when we joined this group, my um, whole um, thing was to recruit women um, and to convince people that they need to start working towards this state. But eventually what we found that being with this group, there was, we were actually creating a lot of anarchy. We were creating a lot of anarchy problems between families. A lot of the young people were turning against their families. I, first started, I then started rejecting my father, my mother who I found out after 17 years. And um, 
and was spiritually we were dying. We felt as if we were. It then started. We then started to realize that we were doing someone else's dirty work. Um, I was missing out on my children. I was missing out on just a sane family life. I actually cut off from my friends that weren't practicing because we started seeing the world as pure and impure. Those years, I've actually, when I reflect back now, how did I progress from those years to where I am now? I had to be proactive in life. I questioned a lot of things. I want to know human beings. Yes, I've had a very crap childhood. Yes, sometimes life isn't fair. But you know what? There's so much beauty in the beauty in the world that we can celebrate. I regret up till this day、um, creating facades like problems within families, within communities. I till this day regret turning my back against my mom, who eventually died. But I'm so glad that we did meet before she passed away. I regret the relationships and the friendships that I've broken. One of my very good friend, I remember, when I came to live with my father, was my youth worker, and I used to go to the youth club, and we became very good friends. She was my youth worker eventually. She actually also came to my wedding, and because of my ideas, my concepts, and my belief at that time, and my categorization of what was Muslim or not Muslim, because she wasn't practicing, I turned my back against her. And I was searching for her for all those years, and I found out that she passed away of cancer. So, human relations, your friendship, the love that you have, needs to be protected at all times. You cannot allow sick, evil people or ideologies to come in between you, because you have what one of the things that we I have to understand from the theological perspective is that all good is given by the one above. And it's my test that how am I going to approach it? And there always has to be pro-life, productive ways and not destructive ways. So where have I come? Is because I've given people chances. I've given myself chance. I've had a new look in life now. And I think the very fact was, have I forgiven my perpetrator? I don't know whether I've forgiven him. But all I say is that I've left him in the hands of God because I wanted to be liberated. I didn't want to be imprisoned to my past anymore. And because of the fact that I am still above the ground, I'm not six feet down. I want to make the best of making these small, small changes in the world. Whether it's just looking after your neighbour, whether it's just like having a good time with your friends. Regardless of what race, sexuality, religion they're from, or no religion, positivity is the key. I believe in positive positivity, and if I do get at that point on my life where I think life is unfair, then I look back in my past. I look back in my childhood, and I think, I think God, I have gone, I've come through a long way. At least I'm not in that situation again, and I celebrate my freedom. I celebrate my life. And if I ha- and I if I celebrate my freedom and my life and my dignity, then that life, pe-、uh, the peace, the dignity, and the liberty and the freedom needs to be protected for every other individual on this earth who is a citizen on this earth. And therefore, we need to make proactive steps in ensuring that everyone's individual freedom is protected.